Art is a diverse range of human activities in creating visual, auditory, or performing arts or performing artworks. It is also used to express someone's imaginative or conceptual ideas and also the technical skills. So it is intended to be appreciated primarily for their beauty or emotional power. So usually art is defined as that uh, which was made in order to express one's feelings, to communicate the information that they want to transcend using their art or the artworks, and also to make a, a point on entertaining someone or show the beauties the beauty of one's surroundings. So good morning everyone. Welcome to our art class. So I am your teacher princess, your um, teacher this school year for art seven. So Angono is considered as the art capital of the Philippines and it is also the home of the two national artists of the Philippines. One of the known artists in Angono is Carlos Botong Francisco. So he is the most distinguished practitioner of mural painting for many decades and best known for his historical pieces. So another one is Lucio San Pedro. So he is an artist from Angono as well, a Filipino composer and teacher who was proclaimed as a national artist of the Philippines for music in 1991. So he is also popular for his contributions to the field of music. So these two are known for their famous artworks in the Philippines. So an example of their work is the street in Angono where you can see the various murals which reflect their rich culture and artistic heritage of their of our country. So for those uh, mural paintings or pieces, you can see the attached videos in the lesson package to see what, uh, what are the type of pieces or artwork that they make in uh, Angono Street. So now let's talk about the arts and crafts from Lowland Luzon. So Lowland Luzon, uh, located alongside the coastline and this is consists of first the Cagayan Valley. We also have the central plains of Luzon and the Bicol region. So today we are going to tackle about the attire, fabric and tapestries wherein we will see how they dress based on their areas. We will also talk about the different crafts that they produce in each areas or part of the lowland Luzon. Also, we have the accessories and body ornaments. So see how they use these uh, accessories and different ornaments to showcase their uh, rich traditions. And also we have the architecture wherein we will see different structures of their household or their houses and the different churches in Lowland, Luzon. And lastly, we will talk about the sculpture. But first, let's talk about the attire, fabrics, and tapestries in Lowland, Luzon. So basically, because of the location of the, uh, the area, the climate or the weather that they experience in these areas brings warm climate. So it means mainit or hot yung temperature sa part na to ng Luzon. That's why they prefer or like to wear clothes that were made of cool materials from natural fibers, like for example, cotton. And the um, um, fabric came from uh, animals. So in that case, uh, they will feel cool and uh, comfortable.
while wearing those clothes. Let's first dive in Ilocos region where they use Inabel. So Inabel is a woven cotton fabric that is um, became the one of the prides of the Ilocos region in the Philippines. So Abel is the Ilocano word for weave and Inabel can be interpreted to be mean as any kind of woven fabric or products. So in the world of weaving, Inabel is particularly used to refer to the textile that only the Ilocanos can produce. So this type of fabric is used for their clothes. So usually yung Inabel is made from cotton fiber, beaten, or how they called it, binatbatan. And also these uh, fabrics are dyed with a natural dyed called sagut. So a sagut is a plum that is abundant on the lands north of Luzon. So they get the sap of the plum and use it as for the coloring of the fibers. So that's why they have different colors of uh, inabels. And also, nowadays, they can also use artificial color for their products. So now, this is how they make the inabel cloth. Let's watch this. Okay, so that's uh, how do they make the inabel. So as you can see, they don't have the modern machine, so they use the traditional one that they use for weaving.
So next we have the intricate embroidery. So it is also crafted in Lowland Luzon. So they make detailed and complicated design to make it unique and attract attractive to the tourists and also to the buyers. So the Lumban, uh, Lumban in Laguna became the hand embroidery capital of the Philippines. So it became their business products and uh, known for its um, good embroidery and unique embroidery in the country. We also have the piña cloth that came from pineapple fiber that they use in Taal, Batangas. And also, we have the juicy cloth. So this one came from banana fiber that is used in Lumban, Laguna. So usually this um, type of um, fiber, uh, they make clothes like Barang Tagalog, the Barot Saya, and different gowns that they make. So these two fabrics were also used for making special clothes for special occasions. So like what I've said earlier, you can make a wedding dress out of that um, fabrics so and barong tagalog and for other special occasion which is one of the famous garments made from this fabric yung uh, dalawa na yan. next we have the sinamay so it is a kind of fabric that is made of abaca or the manila hemp from Albay. So, sinamay is made using pinokpok method where in the fiber is hammered to make the fiber soft before it can be used for weaving. So, they used um, the following fabrics in making barot saya, hats, um, baskets, and also mats. So, Barot Saya is known to be the traditional Filipina clothing worn in the areas of lowland Luzon. So, we're done with the uh, attire, fabrics, and tapestries. So, now let's move to the crafts. So many areas in Lowland Luzon produces a wide variety of different crafts. That's why we have different um, products to show to the tourists that we can be proud of. So an example of this is the pastillas from Bulacan. So it's not just the pastillas. So it can attract the wrappers. So as you can see, the wrappers of pastillas reflects the art and the culture of the Province. So these wrappers are also known as pabalat or borlas de pastilla. So they uh, make different um, pastillas wrappers, different design to make it more attractive, to make it more um, uh, look good. We also have the Christmas lanterns from Pampanga. So the parol of Star Lantern is perhaps the paramount of Filipino Christmas symbol. So this one is a colorful, crafted with love and a glow with the spirit of the season. So usually, di ba, pag bear months na, makikita nyo na yung different types of parol, yung iba umiilaw, yung iba hindi. So the Christmas lantern or parol, San Fernando in Kapampangan can never be distanced from the town which created in the city of San Fernando. So that is one of the crafts in Lowland Luzon as well. And aside from a Christmas lantern in Pampanga, they also the one who make wood carved furniture made of wood, of course. So you can see different designs of chairs or different tables that you can use in the house. Next, so if we go up north to Pangasinan, we have the Bolinao mats, which is made of buri or the raffia leaves. So this is one of the well-known crafts of the province. So the mat is made of buri or the palm 
and can also have the seagrass leaves. So these leaves are dried, usually dinadye din nila with colors so that they can use it uh, or they can make colorful mats. Then after that, they cut it into strips and woven into mats, which may be plain or sometimes intricate. So minsan, plain lang yung um, design ng mga mats, but usually they form intricate design so that mas maganda or mas um, appealing yung itsura or yung finished product ng mat. We also have Burnay Pats from Ilocos. So this is considered as a faint craft from Lowland, Luzon. So the Burnay Pot is made of clay mashed by the carabaos and mixed with sand. And eventually they will bake the pots. So the Burnay is locally known as Tapayan or Banga. So it was used for storage of water, for the rice grains, they can also use this as um, um, uh, storage to ferment condiments like fish paste or yung bagoong na uh, gusto natin or the alamang. Burnet jars are also used as a um, jar for fermenting vinegars. Other form of folk arts and crafts in Laguna is the papier mache from Laguna and it is also known as taka. Okay, so uh, you can see the taka or the paper mache in the streets on the town of uh, Paete in Laguna. So it has been decorated with this craft. So taka or paper mache have different sizes, forms and designs and the most famous is the Horse. So these designs are may vary with different seasons or occasions. So when uh, it is Burmans, of course, or the Christmas time, uh, Santa Claus and the reindeers are the one uh, na mabile. So depende dun sa occasion or season na meron tayo. Also, we have the kayas. So these are the decors made from scrapes of woods. So, these kayas can be turned into floral center pieces for special occasions. So, pwede nilang gawing flowers, pwede din nilang gawing um, animals or different designs. So, they use this to decorate. So, usually sa mga bahay, sa mga hotels, traditionally sa mga museums and different um, areas in Lowland Luzon. So that's it for today, grade 7. So next week, we will continue to discuss about the arts and crafts of Lowland Luzon. So we will proceed to the accessories and body ornaments, architecture, as well as the sculptures. So thank you so much for listening, grade 7. Uh, see you next week. Bye!